<laughs> Welcome to the show. We're here with Mayor Walter Gray. We are just here to talk about over three decades of public service in Kelowna. That's a long time. Um, yeah, about 28 years actually, but not 28 years straight. Okay, you took some breaks in there or what? Well, um, yeah, I was a councillor, but we called it alderman back in the right. beginning. 1986? 1986, Expo year, and then uh, four years later I wanted to move back and pay more attention to the business I was in, which okay. was radio station ownership, so I was gone for six years, and then uh, we uh, sold that business. and. Uh, yeah. I thought, gosh, it was fun being on council. Came talk to the mayor at that time, Jim Stewart, and said, uh, okay. Jim, be the first to know we've sold our radio stations and I'm thinking of running for council uh, again as a councillor. And he said, the heck you are. You want to run, you run for mayor. Really? Said, what do you mean, really? He said, yeah, be, you be first to know I'm not running again. I thought, oh my. So I knew where the executive washroom was. That's the same one everybody <laughs> else uses. And okay. uh, so I ran in 1996 to uh, yeah. ten years later to be the mayor. Yeah, and uh, was elected. And then after nine years, three three year terms, uh, yeah. the, um, uh, the people sent me on another six week vacation. <laughs> six week, six perhaps months, six weeks. Six months. <laughs> six years. Six years. I think it was. Yeah, it, was, it really it went really fast. It just went real fast. Yeah. And I did other things in the community. Totally, yeah. Uh, you know, volunteered as a you know, fundraising was chair for the hospice. The hospice and, that's uh, what it was. Yeah. And applied for and got another radio station. Built three of the radio stations. Very in true, Kelowna. very true. Yeah. So now after uh, sort of being tricked, I guess, into coming back. <laughs> tricked. The mayor I years think you ago, had a, a choice in there. Well, I did have a choice, but uh, I looked at it and said, you know, like, why not? I've done this before. And I yeah. sort of had it in me, I felt. and. Uh, there were things I thought could be done. We were in a recession at the time, and I thought yeah. maybe there are some some things that could be done if we had the right kind of counselors around me. And anyway, as it turned out, uh, I was blessed with an incredible group of eight people. I mean, it's been magical. If this were hockey, we would have won the Stanley Cup, in my view. And I don't mean me, I mean this team of nine yeah. of us. It's been really exceptional. And so you've announced that the season of this team it's coming to an end. That's right. Um, you know, I don't want to die of old age in office. <laughs> and I just celebrated another birthday. Very God, happy birthday, brother. I see all the birthday cards. If you brought something for it, we'll give it to you. <laughs> okay, thanks. So that's kind of uh, Walter Gray as local politician start to end. So, okay, so what attracted you to public service? Well, I mean, going from being a person in the community, you know, you're involved with Snowfest, and then what makes you what what get that next step to I'm gonna run for council what well, motivated that for you I, I think it was just sort of a natural progression I'd always been very involved in the community and uh, it, you know actually when I first ran like as a as an alderman or a councillor I didn't even know that they got paid I mean that oh, really? was, well that wasn't the motivation <laughs> yeah. I mean I'd been the chamber of commerce president yeah. I'd been involved with the Okanagan Neurological Society I was one of the founding directors of Snowfest uh, and being in the radio business all my life of course radio the secret of local radio is to really roll up your sleeves for the community totally. yeah. and so I took that seriously and and it just seemed to be kind of the next step and a little did I know of course that I'd had uh, relatives in the past who had also been in oh, government okay. Okay. Uh, had a um, you learned that after you announced yeah, your I had a, a great grandfather who was the mayor of Victoria. His son was the mayor of Victoria at one time. His uh, other son or nephew was mayor of Oak Bay. Uh, okay. One of them was an MLA way back in the, I think, 1920, 1930, somewhere in there. Um, I didn't really know that when I first ran, yeah. but I guess, you know, maybe some of it is um, predisposed. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. This was about what I wanted to do and what I felt I could do for the community. And, and you've done that. So you've had. You know, around three decades of public doesn't mean yeah. if it doesn't matter if it was in council or not in council. You've been still involved in the community oh, the yeah. whole time. Oh, yeah. So everybody should. Uh, One hundred percent, everybody should. should. Yeah. So, you know, that's a good question. So why don't they, and why should they? But, but for you, what's when you walk around Kelowna? Yeah. And you see all the you you yeah. know the intricacies be behind many different yeah, projects. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Talk about Rotary Center for the Arts. You talk yeah. about the hospice. Which one do you feel you're most proud of? Which which ones did just really just kind of goes? You know what? That that just feels good to be a part of that process. Well, I, I don't know that you can really come down to look at a specific project okay. or a specific program or anything like that. I think it really is like you you look at the community in which you live in a holistic sense, and I do as well. 
Now, when you hear Kelowna being referred to as one of the greatest places in the world and it aspires to be the greatest mid-sized community in Canada and things like that, and then during this three-year term winning, I think now this city has won, including very recently a game for Bernard Avenue yeah. uh, and, and other things we've done, the, the whole regime and how we do accounting and uh, account for things in the finance department in Kelowna, like 12 years straight. Okay. Um, and the Open for Business Award, the uh, Bernard yeah, Street Award. Yeah, There's been a number of accolades for the, the works that happened. So, so nothing really jumps out specifically so is there anything broadly that it's well, just your community, right? I, I, you know, it's very easy to think more in terms of bricks and mortar because that's what yeah. the public sees. I mean, obviously Bernard Avenue has been a very uh, satisfying experience, um, no question. I mean, that decision was made and it was a long time coming uh, because it was talked about when I was the mayor last time yeah. around. Uh, by a, the previous uh, mayor and council, but uh, you know sometimes it's not necessarily the project; okay. it's the execution of the project. And Kelowna can be so proud of how that was done. I mean, here you have all of these merchants, who for the most part are uh, tenants in buildings owned yep. by other people, yep. uh, because they actually paid a lot of the bills. The fourteen million dollars didn't come from the taxpayers by and large; it came from people that hopefully would benefit from a revitalized Bernard Avenue. And people are excited about it. Well, I mean, people yeah, were, this and, summer was a banner summer for. Well, they Kelowna. put up in, for, with inconveniences. You know, yeah. I mean, they're you know fences in front of their stores for months on end and they understood that uh, this was about the long term so what's the term a short-term pain for long-term yeah. pain bought into that uh, the city uh, managed that very very well I'm yeah. so proud of the way the people that are employed by the city managed that whole project and the contractors they had doing the project so long-term vision is one of the things that a mayor does you come up with long-term vision you're how do you come up with a vision that you have for Kelowna how have you over yeah. the years what's the influences how does that how do you piece those visions together so you say hey we need a second bridge that's one of the things we've been talking about right. that'll be 20 30 years down the road well but how do you come up with those well I think when a person is running for mayor or running as a counselor I think you have to be very very careful and not make too big a deal about what your vision is because my vision doesn't matter I mean it's a team vision so what you what you need to do is have the uh, trust of those people that don't even know if they're going to be on your council yet. You need the trust of them to say, you know, I kind of like what he's saying. You can't make pro I didn't make any promises. Uh, yes, I made one promise okay. uh, when was I ran for mayor, and that was that we would get transit to go to H two O and to the CNC. Yeah. I mean, here you got one building that attracts fifty thousand visits a month, so and the other thirty thousand, and it didn't have transit going there. Yeah, okay. And mind you, I researched that, and looked at it, because there's no point making a promise if you can, you know, if you can't deliver. And I said, within 120 days, we'll have buses going there. And 110 days later, we had buses going there. Nice work. So, um, it, you know, that was one you could deliver on, but yeah. normally you can't because, uh, and it should be. Um, a consensus building operation. You run it like a business and just because you're the chairman or in this case the mayor doesn't mean do it my way. It means hey guys and gals I think this is the way we should do it and then you listen to the feedback. It's exactly yeah. the way you would chair a, um, uh, a brainstorming session okay. and oftentimes you'll do that by throwing out the goofiest idea on the planet and then everybody in the room to their own personal defense and potential embarrassment rushes to the table with a better idea. <laughs> okay. So all you're really doing is stimulating people's minds. Yeah. And that goes beyond council too, that uh, that goes to staff. And if staff sees a council, a mayor and council, yeah. who are um, uh, really engaged, really passionate, show respect for one another, and show appreciation for those at the end of the day that have to do the work, yeah. and that's those people that work elsewhere in this building and in other facilities throughout the city. But yes. Do I have a vision? Uh, uh, yes. And fortunately, uh, the vision is shared, so I don't yes. have to kind of swim upstream yeah. with this. Uh, one is, and it was really the city manager who sort of threw the proposition out there prior to me becoming mayor, like, let's aspire to be the greatest mid-sized city in Canada. And then you say, well, gosh, that can mean a lot of things. Yeah. But what it does mean is we want to have very, very high standards. We want the place to look nice. We want the place to feel safe. We want the taxpayers to be able to afford to live here. You know, all of those things. And so that becomes the very, very broad vision. But um, uh, the, 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 my vision is really to cure a lot of the ills we have, and it won't happen in one generation. One is, of course, to get more and more people uh, out of their automobiles, right. and for good health reasons, plus, of course, getting rid of 
traffic congestion, get more people walking and cycling and exercising outdoors, and that includes like having events to stimulate people to either jog, swim, run, cycle, yeah. or whatever. Uh, and in time, uh, get rid of this terrible badge Kelowna currently occupy, uh, owns, and that is being the most auto-centric city in all of Canada. And really? People, that is, that's we're a relatively level, flat place, yeah. and, and yet here we have more cars per capita than any other place in Canada. Now, having said that, we also have on a per capita basis more lanes of cycle paths. So what the heck, here we are on one hand encouraging cycling, and but same for sidewalks, and yet we can't get out of our automobiles. So it's a case of just keep slowly working at it, slowly working at it, making bike paths more adventuresome, more interesting, more beautiful. Yeah. Uh, that all started, I guess, with my very first year as mayor, uh, the council of the day and, uh, and myself and staff bought into the whole idea of the Greenway. Oh, that's an awesome and the greenway is incredible, that's awesome. yeah. but you know that's just the beginning. We need yeah. more of that. We need people that live in Eastern Canada. Oh, Kelowna! Oh, that's that place where they have all of those beautiful yeah. walkways, all of those beautiful, you know. Cycle so what paths. about? So what about any regrets? Like thirty years is a long time, or twenty eight years? Do you have any regrets from those times? Like, is there anything that you just haven't seen fulfilled that you wanted to get done, or any thoughts on that? Well, um, no, because you know you realize early in the game of being in uh, political life, and I hate the word politics, by the way. I okay. like to, I like what do you to see my role as chairman of the board, okay. not as the mayor, because that sounds like it's some pompous guy. That it sounds pretty important. Me. It sounds pretty important. You well, should try to meet know, that guy sometime. You know, <laughs> it's, it's not about the mayor. It's what the community in which yeah. he or she lives. Well, it's public service part. Yeah, it is. Um, I uh, regrets. Um, no, I really don't have any regrets because you do learn to be patient. You realize Rome isn't built in a day. Okay. Uh, but one of my reasons for running, I, had, I may not tell you all of them, but I had I essentially had five reasons for running. For which well, six, time? really. One was when I was, you know, being asked by people what I run in the last election. Uh, uh, one of the reasons I ran is my psychiatrist was out of town, so I made the decision on my own. <laughs> not, not your wife said yes or no? Said, I mean, <laughs> no, actually, you know, Doreen, uh, Doreen really, this time, this uh, three yeah. years ago, said, you know, I think you want to run a game. She can and see I it in you. I didn't even know if I wanted yeah. to. Um, <laughs> and, I, and she never really said that before. Yeah. And I thought, gosh, are you saying I should? Well, if you don't, you won't be happy that you didn't. Oh, well, that's a pretty big statement. So that was, that was yeah. kind of, I guess, that trigger yeah. moment. But then it had to be done with uh, a group of people uh, around me so that I could be on this team of nine people that, uh, that I could work with and who shared this broad vision yeah. that Kelowna should be open for business and that Kelowna should aspire to move forward. Because you know, one thing I do know and I learned early in this business is if you're, and it's in, in business, not just in city business or city management, if you're not moving forward and upward, you're going in the other direction. And the absolute, and there's no question about this, if you're, if you're on a uh, negative growth curve in population, in economic stimulus, yeah. etc., in order to maintain uh, the services you're all used to, taxes must go up at a greater rate than they ordinarily would. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Well, you don't want it that way. Right? <laughs> no, yeah, no. You don't want to have less of what you're paying <laughs> totally, taxes yeah. for like, and pay seems more like a conundrum. for. Yeah. And so you always have to be moving forward. You've got to be very careful you don't move forward at too rate, you know, too great a rate. Yeah. And we really don't have a lot of control over that because if the economy is hot, you yeah. know, worldwide, nationally, so looking you forward, get caught up in that. Looking forward, you are retiring. You've got you still. What you? What is your vision? What is going to need moving forward? after you're gone. Let's say people are watching this and they're saying, okay, well, hey, he, he is retiring, but he, he had lots of vision. He still has it. Is there anything you would like to share with people what your vision is? Well, I think, uh, and, and now this does come down to project, because that solves totally. some of the problems yeah. I talked about. And that is, unfortunately, Premier Christy Clark uh, picked up on it right away. I'm so happy that happened. The bridge because, and that was uh, that there shall be a second crossing. We all know there has yeah, to be okay. a second crossing of Okanagan Lake. But she actually articulated that and said, there shall be. And there's a research for it. And we believe, as the mayor yeah. believes, that within 10 to 12 years, we have to have that thing under construction. 10 to 12 years? 
Well, that seems fast yeah, for me. That'd be about, uh, well, I've always said it would be uh, 2025 okay. to, to uh, 2027. Yes. Actually, she and presumably her research says it probably should be a little sooner than that. Wow. And, okay. and, I think, coming up. and I'm starting to think she's right and I was wrong, but it doesn't matter. We both agreed that that was very important. Yep. That should be on the agenda and it, they should start to do the planning, even in a modest sort of way at this point. And is there any other projects you would pick as, you know, if you've chosen pr that project, is there any other one you see that, you know what, this is really going to be needed well, as we move forward? The other thing, the project, but let's put it sort of in the vision okay, category, sure. was to really densify the core center downtown Kelowna, yeah. you know, Bernard Avenue from the highway to Clement, yeah. from the water up to Richter Street, and to make that high density. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, because a lot of people would like to live in a very active, vibrant, things yeah. happening, you know, round the clock uh, uh, kind of uh, kind of community. And the more density you get, interestingly, you also uh, uh, disproportionate the number of uh, incidents involving bad behavior. So the bad people don't like to be around too many other good people, upbeat people. Sounds so, um, but. A lot of people want downsize. We've yes. moved since I first became the mayor where the higher percentage of people actually lived in single family homes. Yep. And now the, 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 the graph has turned the other way and now it's more and more people in uh, apartments or condos. More luxurious space, smaller square footage, uh, and usually associated with the retirement years. So there's a real appetite for people that are moving here or people that live out in an orchard or some large property to move into uh, an active downtown in a mid-sized community. So that's why there's been this huge focus on downtown Cologne. Now having said that, uh, when you're uh, in city government, you have to make sure you supply, when it comes to housing, housing for all needs. Uh, particularly with those that can't really afford housing. You have to give them the dignity of housing because that's part of bringing them up by the bootstraps. So where are we at with the, you know, the K, for example, the KSS site? That one's, well, that's, that has a great... The KSS site yeah. uh, is, uh, you know, now finally. Mind you, there was no rush to have it move. I mean, it was just a case of getting that thing moving. Yeah. And uh, there, there's some things I can't say at this early stage, but certainly within the next month or so I can. Uh, there are two uh, lower cost housing projects under construction now awesome. yep. over in the Road Cliff area. Yep. Uh, there always has been the plan for, I believe, say 20%, I don't know if it's exactly that, of the whole site would be dedicated to parkland, uh, which would be very, very nice people place green parkland, yep. including a defined uh, dog park area. And then the other along the highway and at the corner of Richter Street and Harvey Avenue, um, uh, commercial and high rise. And we've had a number of false starts on that, but we, uh, we now have a um, uh, uh, corporation, um, locally as it turns oh, out, but it was never going to be that way in the beginning, okay. that will take that on and over time develop that. And that will be a combination of uh, housing, uh, retail, some of it highway oriented, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And because there will be a density uh, involved in terms of housing in that neighborhood, there will be an overpass across uh, Harvey Avenue to get people to connect okay. with the downtown area. So but, but back to the other thing about <laughs> densifying <laughs> downtown Cologne. Yep. We also have to have choices for people that maybe want to move into apartments, third store, have a view of the lake or whatever. So it's important we also develop a, a different style of housing, but somewhat densified in the South Pendosi area, the Rutland area, and the Orchard Park Capri area. Yep. Uh, and But still have places for people that want acreage and whatnot. So when a person comes to Kelowna, they don't have to say, how come they don't have any... You know, X style yeah, of housing. We should have it all. People yeah. should have a choice. Price range, geographic, and style. I don't know if you're going to retire. You seem so pretty <laughs> passionate about this stuff. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so what's next? I mean, you, you've announced your retirement. Uh, oh, no, no, that... hang on, hang on. I have not announced retirement. I you have not retire. Uh, what have you announced? I'll, I'll retread. A retread. Okay, so you're not going to run again is all you basically no, said. No, no, that's correct. Okay, so do you Here have any idea? Time. Do you have any idea what's next? Any well, thoughts for it? Travel, perhaps? Well, yeah, yeah, there, bucket list? I do have a bucket list, yeah. My you do have a bucket list? Well, it's on the fridge? Yeah, um, my, it's not completed yet. Most of it's in pencil. Okay. <laughs> but um, my wife and I will be away for about half of January, going to uh, a different number of different locations in the Caribbean. And nice. uh, then in February, we're going to go down into the Phoenix Scottsdale area. <laughs> and then, alas, come back by way of Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, and in terms of travel, don't have too much planned after that, except uh, I would like to maybe do another sort of full family away Gathering. adventure sometime uh, 
maybe on my wife's my 50th anniversary or something. Nice. I've done it for the last four uh, years with uh, our entire family of 22 people. Twice, wow. Twice to Hawaii, twice to Mexico. But I say, whoa, hang on. <laughs> what if I live a long time? I'll have no money. <laughs> so, um, but uh, but I have I've always wanted to write a book, and I have the idea for the book, and I have for quite some time. And it would be, it would be about politics, but not not about me and politics. Okay. So what what how broad well, would you go? I've got you know some authors will admit they do this. They think of a title and then think, oh well, what will that book be? Like? Yeah, okay. So well, do you have the title? The title, yeah. I'll okay, good. Dun, dun, dun. Scoop. This Scoop. is the news broadcast. Um, <laughs> it will be called One Hundred and One Ways to Cook uh, to One One Hundred and One Ways to Cook. A rubber chicken, <laughs> and, and it will be sort of a bathroom reader, and each chapter will be anywhere from between one page and three pages, and it will be either stories I've heard, stories I was a part of, but it'll usually involve politicians, uh, premiers, prime ministers, and whatnot. Uh, some of them never made the front page or even the back page of but the they newspaper. Should. It won't be a tell-all, but it'll be kind of <laughs> cute. Okay. Uh, but then, having said that exciting news. I'm not entirely sure I have the discipline to write a book. I gotta, I gotta get some advice from a successful book writer to say, okay. how do you get up in the morning and say, oh, I gotta spend <laughs> two hours at this? Well, when you get up every morning, you're but, in front of them. But the other thing I want to do, and I'm really sad on this one, it'll take time. Um, and I've been, this has gone through my mind too. Considering my background in radio and uh, in cable television, and having been on the board of Telefilm Canada and kind of yeah. all of those things there. Um, I'd like to do a TV pilot, which would be very, very okay. Canadian, uh, very historic, entertaining, much like the pace of, say, uh, one of those 7 p.m. programs on most of the networks, you know, news and edit, frivolous stuff. Okay. Yeah. But this would be, oh, yeah, is he still alive? You know, that kind of a program. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I assume you're hosting it and you're on the front. No, 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 no. no I just come up with the idea. Okay, you come up with my, it. My name will skip by really fast at the end and okay. I'll own the program. <laughs> there we go. Let's get <laughs> but I won't do any work. Yes, you will. I've seen your well, style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a long day today. I'm sure many meetings today. Anyway, yeah. Those two things, the book and the, and the TV pilot, those are just like, gosh, maybe it would be fun to pursue that thing I've always wanted to do. So you're talking like a parody news type thing? No, or no, are you no talking, I'm like, not are you talking telling about? you a darn thing beyond what I said. Whoa! Okay. Well, I appreciate the scoops we've had. So I guess as the community, we just want to say thank you. Well, you well, dedicated a lot of time to this community. I want to do right. an exit interview yes. and celebrate what you've yeah, done. Your so. audience doesn't know this, but you and I actually first met getting off the plane, maybe on the plane, <laughs> yeah. I don't remember, in Japan. Remember? We totally did, yeah. Went to our sister city. Yeah, I was involved as a founding member of that sister city was, organization, too. That was a trip where I got to know, yeah. I got to a chance for me personally, I got a chance to meet most people that get yeah. stuff done in Cologne. And wasn't that exciting? We had the whole second floor of the Canadian Pavilion yeah. for four days. It was pretty fantastic. Stainless steel kitchen, had parties, entertained people with their money, not ours. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I mean, even the chef, so Travis Hackle was we there. We took our chefs. We took all yeah. the entertain you, Robert yeah. Fine, uh, Alan Church. We almost had Alex Vaughn, but we didn't quite. Oh, <laughs> that's another story. Interview Alex Vaughn. <laughs> yeah, interesting guy. Full story, uh, not coming for that one <laughs> anytime soon. But no, I just, you know what, you've been highly involved. I remember for me, I, I sing uh, a World Centennial song in it with a few friends. Yeah, you're so very, it was good, very talented. And it was a time where we at Prosper Place thing, probably my biggest gig, and you were the first to your feet, and it's just like, you've always been celebrating the arts and different stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. Again, thank you for your service. Yeah. I well, wanted to yeah. kind of just have a chance to, for you to talk about that time. Yeah, actually been. giving birth to the, uh, to the, uh, uh, you know, the, the arts district has, yeah. was very satisfying, but yeah. again, everything's team, you know, you can't say, I did this, I did that. It's like, we did this, and by gosh, we did it with a combination of hard work, luck, and timing. Yeah. And, uh, but a lot of colla it's that collaborative spirit, absolute, right? It's that absolute, bringing people absolute. together and making stuff happen. So yeah, collaboration and consensus. You know, a mayor in Canada and in the United States, all the different states are different, but in Canada, um, a mayor really doesn't have a lot of power. Nor should they, by the way. Well, the mayor of Toronto, maybe. But, uh, um, <laughs> that's uh, no, he doesn't anymore. Do that's it. recognition. I don't yeah. think I'm um, beyond that. <laughs> But the one thing, and anybody thinking of running for office, particularly yeah. if it's in a leadership position, remember this, it's important. You don't have any given power, but they can never take the power of influence away from you. Yeah. So as long as you can get the team of people you need and depend on to sort of see it your way, or fine tune the, common. the general discussion yeah. through consensus, yeah. then that power is there, the power of influence. Yeah. And that's as powerful as it gets. Awesome. Again, thanks for your time. Thanks, thanks. for your service. Thank and, you. Uh, congratulations. Enjoy.